So what could I do? I could say the window is less than 600. The window width is less than 600 pixels. Find the thing on the page that has an ID of fall pick. And <coughs> style dot display equals none. Otherwise, in line. Okay. So there we go. And there, it's not there. So we've achieved our goal from a visual perspective. But if we were to analyze this and think about it, what's happening here? All right, what's happening here when the client uh, when the client requests this, they are getting this web page. So the web page loads. All these tags load. This image tag loads. All right. Then the onload event kicks in. And the onload event then looks and evaluates the width of the page, width of the screen rather. And if the width is less than 600, it hides that image. It says don't display that image. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture is that the page loads, then it decides to turn off that image, which means they had to download that image. And again, bandwidth is a consideration in a mobile environment. All right? Therefore, we might not want to take the approach of downloading a whole bunch of images and then hiding them. All right? So, there's a number of ways that you could get around this, probably. The way that I'm going to take is I'm going to have a little, um, and I almost hate to do this, but I'm going to have a little dummy image that I'm going to initially load. And then I'm not going to show or hide the, the big image. I'm going to swap out the image, depending on the size of the page. So, let me go into... Let me call the night, actually. The GIMP, good. I'm going to go and make a new image that is One by one pixel. And I'm going to save it as correction. I'm going to export yeah, it. Export it. <laughs> to dummy.png.
I'm going to set this to dummy.png and then instead of making it visible or invisible actually I could do that as well but um, I am going to also set If it's greater than 600, I'm going to set the um, document.src to the actual image that I want. Okay. This has the advantage of I don't download that picture unless it's a, it's a bigger monitor size. So if it's a smaller monitor, what's going to get downloaded is this dummy PNG, which is tiny, 1 KB, as opposed to 18. Now, to be sure, 18 KB isn't that big, but if we were talking about a larger size, and keeping in mind that on a, in a mobile device, bandwidth becomes more precious than it would typically, all right, this could add up if we were talking about multiple images, and it should work the same. So there it works the same. Here it works the same. You don't really visibly see a difference, but if we were to use that little um, tool that they discuss in the book that shows what actually gets downloaded to the client browser, would see that it didn't, in the case of the mobile device, it did not download the um, tiny image. So, so if you were to cha change your windows, if you were to start on a desktop, with, if you were to, like he was saying, make your windows smaller, would you still, okay. So, it's, so technically it's loading that, is it, would it be loading that little picture or no, or just still using it? No, because my thought is if it's already loaded that image, who cares? I'm not going to like swap out and, right. and put the dummy little image up again. Okay. All right. So it would only load the smaller image if it's, if it's initially loaded. Well, it, well, well, let me rephrase that. On a desktop, it would first load the tiny dummy image, then it would reload the... That's my dummy image. Yeah. I'm just so, trying to like... like Backwards constructed in my mind. How you know? Yeah. I know that it's a not practical question. I'm just kind of curious. No, it's good because it's important to understand how this works, how the client and server interact, and how this goes. In that case, it would download the small image. The script then would go in and and swap uh, in the bigger image. Yes. Okay. So this would be an argument for mobile first too, right? I mean, basically, if you designed it with no image, unless it was a desktop, then it would. Without doing all the Java, if you... Without, if I was just using a CSS-based solution, I would always download the image. I would just show or hide it, depending on okay, the CSS. Okay, even if it was... Even it would, either base. way. Either way, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the only way I wouldn't is if, like, if it was like a background image on something. But if it was an HTML image, all right... Um, if it was like an image tag in the HTML, then it would get downloaded. Okay. It just simply would not be displayed. Now, and again, depending on the kind of image and all that, maybe it's not that big a deal. Maybe, yeah, okay, you're wasting, in this case, 18 KB. It's probably not tragic to, to download that and not show it. Um, but again, in a, in a different context with larger, uh, uh, larger images or possibly more images, that could become a factor. All right. So this is a little trick that we could go to where we don't download the image unless we really need to. It does have the disadvantage of now we've downloaded 19 KB instead of 18 KB on, on the desktop one, right? Because we first downloaded the little dummy image, then we downloaded the real image. But that's probably less of an issue than uh, the, the gain that we get from only downloading um, 
the small image if we're not going to display it on a mobile device. Now, um, I believe I'm going to I believe I'm going to take a different slant um, going forward for the next thing. The next topic is um, is what? The next topic, if I'm not mistaken, is a separate mobile page. All right, to have a separate mobile site and all that. I'm going to talk about, I believe instead, and this, this will, it sort of goes with this topic, so, you know, not that huge a deal. But while we're talking about writing one responsive page, I'm going to talk a little bit about some techniques that you could do via server-side scripting to maybe make a page that's responsive. So let's cover all of the responsive one page sort of things first, and then we'll get into the multiple pages, knowing that we're still going to do some of these same things, because just because we have this technique of two pages, we're still going to do some of the responsive things, again, as a fallback means or, or for whatever. Questions? If you can, if you can leave the HTML intact and just modify the CSS, yes. Okay. And if, if for whatever reason, you know, maybe you didn't put an ID on something that right, needs an ID the now, then yeah, go ahead and make the change. And then it says finally create a homepage and navigation. Um, is there any content that needs to be on the homepage, or it doesn't? I mean, you could write, you know, it, it should maybe have like a little, little, you know. Think about like what you'd see on an actual one, maybe a little paragraph saying that this is a, uh, you know, this is a, your, your, your resources for mobile okay. development and, you know, if, if you want to make it look spiffy and make it look like a completed page. So, yeah, a little bit of text would be fine. You could, yeah, if you want to do something like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's not going to be huge, but it, it's going to have some stuff on it. All right. Other questions? Is anyone going to lab? All right, we'll see you next week.